Now, so far all the vectors we've been doing, we've been adding together using trigonometry, Pythagoras' theorem, but you can do scale diagrams if you're not very good at those math skills. So if you did have to do a vector addition of, say, six, six newtons here and, and seven newtons, then you would try and actually do a scale diagram of it. So first of all, we would, do, we would select the scale there. So you would say let one centimetre equal, say, one newton in this case here, if we're doing forces. And that, all that means is you need to draw a six centimetre line uh, to scale to actually represent that vector. So you get a ruler and do six centimetres. Paste, you get a ruler there, and we might actually just scale this a bit here. So you can draw a line here for six centimetres in. And start it there. And make sure that that goes out to six centimetres. Okay. Now at the end of that, you would then need to draw a seven centimetre line to represent the seven newtons going down. So if we just rewrite it here, we want to make sure this is seven centimetres long. And in that case there, if we rotate this around, You end up with a seven there. I've done it pretty well. Now, after you've got those two in there, you should actually label these. So, we'll label these as the six newton one. It's one force. It's the seven newton force here. You could call them A and B if that's what the answer is there. So, to get the total here, we would normally then do a total vector going from one to the other, going okay, from here to here, the straight line, to add a double arrow there. So, that is your total there. So to get the result here, we can get the ruler, grab that ruler, and try and measure that length there again from the start. Looking at that there, we're measuring this to be around about 9.3, roughly centimetres. So that would imply on the scale it's 9.3 newtons. So it's okay to use this as a technique and to work it out. You should also give the angle though in here, work out the angle in here, theta, and rather than using trig to work it out before, like we would do tan of theta is um, opposite over adjacent, so you can use tan to the minus one of seven over six to work out the angle here. Instead of doing that, you could get your geoline and work it out. And you want to line that up so the centre of that is on the actual angle there, and then we want to rotate this. It will let me rotate this. So you want the centre part of that to be at the point of the angle between the two lines that you're trying to measure. You make sure your other straight line is lining up with your zero on this measurement here for the angles. And then obviously you're measuring the angle here. So looking at that, that looks like it's pretty much on the 50 mark, very close there. Looks like it's coming to the 50 mark using the inside measurements, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So we'd be saying this is at 50 degrees and hopefully that would be roughly right. And as long as these results are reasonably close to what you would get if you tried trigonometry and Pythagoras, that'll be fine. The advantage of using this, of course, is if you start getting multiple vectors here, it's a lot easier to work with that. So if you can imagine, so if you can imagine doing multiple forces on the same object, look at this here. If you were told you had forces that were acting sort of up to say three newtons, there's one that going to go sideways to six newtons, and there was another one coming this way of nine newtons at an angle of say, let's go for um, 100 degrees here. Those sort of ones, or these types of questions, you're going to have to be going 3 and 6 and then going back and doing 9 somehow, depending on the angle there. Sorry, from the start to the finish, like that. And rather than using trigonometry to play around with that one, I and mean, you can do it, you could just do a scale diagram there and get the result and quote the angle around from true north there. Degrees true, you measure it with a geoline or a protractor. So that's how we can do it. You can also do it by breaking into components, by the way, and break this particular vector up into parts, horizontal and vertical components, and then vertical components first, um, do the horizontal components as vectors, and then put the total together at the end. Um, but this is probably quicker.